guess we should get this thing started. Aloha, folks. Welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I'm glad to have you back here in the Breezeway. We're going to make an incredible cocktail from the 1950s of Trader Vic's. Every once in a while, as a vintage tiki collector, you might stumble upon something that you're just like, holy smokes. And it might be at a thrift store, antique mall, uh, garage sale. Uh, did I say estate sale? Probably. And sometimes they'll pop up on eBay. And while it's way more fulfilling to find the stuff in the wild, sometimes on eBay, when you see it, you gotta pop on it. You gotta grab it when you can, because vintage stuff doesn't, vintage stuff isn't like Amazon, where you're just like, yeah, I'd, I'd like that now, please, and there you go. Vintage stuff is out there, but it's hidden. It's, it doesn't like to be found. But I found on eBay recently, one of my holy grail glasses from Trader Vic's. This is the Voodoo Tumbler. Early days of tiki collecting, I really wasn't crazy about it. It felt more like Greek to me, or Roman or something. But as the years have gone on, I have sincerely grown to appreciate and to love this glass. Super excited. And it's funny, when I posted this, I had friends on Facebook that were like, oh yeah, I found five of those for like a dollar at a garage sale. And it's like, yeah, I know, like that happens, but it didn't happen to me. But I found the Trader Vic's Suffering Bastard Decanter for a dollar at a thrift store. I didn't even know what it was at the time, I just bought it. I was like, uh, this, I think this is Tiki? I don't know, but it was kind of before the book of Tiki, so you kind of didn't know anything. Anyway, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you pay for it. For all of you out there, I paid for this. For you, for us, for the show. And my book's getting a little worked here, but on page 11 of the glassware of Trader Vic's, you can see the Voodoo Tumbler here. And the cocktails that were served in it were the Babalu and the Voodoo Grog. And tonight, we'll be making the Voodoo Grog. This is super exciting. Before we get going, I would also like to thank Miss Pinup Palmer for showing up last week on the show. But for Trader Vic's Voodoo Grog, we'll be using limes, white grapefruit, St. Elizabeth Allspice Dram, honey, passion fruit syrup from Small Hands, gold Puerto Rican rum, we'll be using the Bacardi 8, Rum VU Agricole, we're gonna be using the Rum JM. And for the first time ever on the show, we will be using an egg. Like in a cocktail? Yeah, in a cocktail. Weird. We will start by cutting a lime in half. So we need three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. I almost forgot, Leandro from the Educated Barfly taught us to cut the backs off these things. And supposedly you get more juice. We'll try it with Leandro not being here. See if it works. It's definitely easier to squeeze that way, I'll tell you that much. That right there is three quarters of an ounce. Okay, we will pour that into the tin. Next up is a quarter ounce of honey. And it says that we want to dissolve the honey in the lime juice. So, we're gonna pour that into here. Okay, we have a bar spoon here, and we're just gonna take this and scoop the rest of the honey out. And then whatever we end up pouring into this is gonna help get the honey into the cocktail too. So I'm just gonna take that and give it a quick stir in here. Okay, I'd say that the honey is, is pretty well mixed with the lime juice. Mmm, well, ha! Tangy and honey -y. Okay, next up is three quarters ounce of white grapefruit juice. I'd like to thank my buddy Dano Forte, the legendary surfboard shaper, and I do mean that, for giving me the white grapefruit. My tree is not currently ripe, so thank you, Dano. Okay, so three quarters of an ounce of white grapefruit juice. There's always so much juice in these things. There we go. Okay, three quarters of an ounce of grapefruit juice. Three quarters of an ounce of pimiento dram. You can also use this allspice. Okay, so we're gonna have some like cloves and allspice flavoring to this cocktail. It's exciting, it's like my favorite, it's like my favorite palette in tiki cocktails. Half an ounce of passion fruit syrup. So that should lighten the cocktail up a little bit with some sweetness. This is where things get weird. One egg white. Egg whites in cocktails have always freaked me out. It just seems gross. 
but I know it's a thing, and I know that some of the best cocktails in the world have egg white in them. So, I did a little bit of research. I watched our buddy Leandro on The Educated Barfly, how he deals with eggs and egg whites. So, he has a separate tin that he cracks the egg into, not into, but you open it up, you just kind of dribble the egg white out of it. Ugh. Gross, dude. And then he was kind of like juggling it back and forth and getting the yolk into the other side of the shell. So we're getting all the egg white here. Super gross. Okay, I would say that that's probably it. You just want to make sure that you don't break the yolk. And that's the reason why you do this in a separate tin because if you were to break the yolk over here, then the whole cocktail's ruined. Okay, I'm gonna call that good there. Super gross, dude. Now I learned that there are cocktails that you would dry shake with an egg white. So you'd have a couple ingredients in there with the egg white, you shake it with no ice, and it really, uh, I think it emulsifies the egg, really froths it up and gets like a good foam out of it. It's kind of the idea of, of an egg white, from what I understand, in a cocktail is the foam, a little bit of body to the cocktail too. Uh, we're gonna take the egg white here. Ugh. Oh, oh, don't ever do that, don't smell it. And we're gonna pour that into the cocktail. Oh God, so gross, dude. Blah. You have to wash that out once you're done with it. You should wash all your stuff out, but especially anything with eggs in it, you gotta wash out. Blah. Okay, we wanna put about eight ounces of ice into the cocktail. You wanna make sure that you're using purified water, crushed ice, like really good ice, because the ice helps dictate what the cocktail is gonna taste like. Now, Trader Vic's Bartender's Guide from 1972 says to blend this for 20 seconds. Usually we're around like five to six seconds. This one, I think we really wanna make sure that we froth up that egg. We're gonna use the Hamilton Beach mixer over here, and on high, 20 seconds. That is 20 seconds. If you're using one of these, you wanna make sure that the spindle stops before you pull it all the way down, otherwise you're gonna get splattered. And especially with like egg whites in it, you don't wanna get splattered. Now I have a confession to make. I've already done this cocktail. I did this two nights ago. Uh, the mic wasn't plugged into the camera and I was using an incorrect version of one of these rums. So I wanted to just do it fresh. I hope you, I hope you guys appreciate that. But when I did it before, I poured it almost to the top and then I had to garnish it and it was a, it was such a mess. So we are going to be wary of that. There's a little bit of ice kind of starting to float in, but really, well, maybe we can do it. Okay, okay, good. Maybe I had too much ice last time. And then it says to garnish with a pineapple spear. I wanna show you something that I found at Stater Brothers. Like if you go to the grocery store all the time, you're probably like, yeah, dude, of course they have that. But uh, I've never seen it before. They have pre-cut pineapple spears. So if you're like a, like a bachelor like me and you don't wanna cut pineapple because you're never gonna eat all of it, this is perfect. I also learned that this will probably go all the way to the bottom or get close. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stab it with a Trader Vic's Menahuni and then he's gonna help keep this thing up. How's that? Pretty tricky situation, huh? We have a little bit of room left, so I'd like to put a little more ice in. We are gonna garnish it with some fresh mint. I had somebody in the comments like hassling me going like, dude, your mint game sucks. And I was like, uh, just because I like a lot of mint doesn't mean my mint game sucks. It means that you're probably not using enough mint, fellow. So you wanna make sure you give it a whack it kind of knocks the oils out, and then it, uh, I see um, Leandro like twisting these things. The educated barfly is teaching us all kinds of stuff. I guess we're gonna do this. It probably helps keep the whole bunch together. Okay, that looks pretty rad. The foam's starting to climb over the edge there. And then from Surfside Sips, I like to try to keep these things as traditional as possible. But when Surfside Sips sends you a bone straw made out of glass, the Voodoo Grog is probably the most appropriate place in the world to put it. So we're gonna garnish it like that. And then you should really use fresh grated nutmeg when you're doing like a, like a dusting, but I don't have a grater. So there we go. And so, from Trader Vic's in the 1950s, this is the Voodoo Grog. Let's taste this thing. 
I'm so excited to try it with the correct rum. First of all, I mean, can you get over this glass and this garnish and everything? It's artwork. Oh, wow, that's good. Oh, man. It is so delicately balanced. It's so perfect. It's kind of creamy. Nothing really jumps to the forefront of the flavor explosion. You get a bit of the passion fruit, giving it kind of a fruit flavor a little bit, but it's not a fruity drink. Just a bit of honey. It's really very creamy. This seems very atypical of a Trader Vic's cocktail because Trader Vic's cocktails are usually very citrus forward, sometimes kind of sharp. Whereas Don the Beachcomber cocktails have like a little bit more of that spice, like that clove and nutmeg and um, like allspice flavoring. So this is kind of something that I feel like the Vic was kind of stepping away from his traditional stuff a little bit. This is an incredible cocktail. If you have all the ingredients, you ought to make this at home. And of course you're getting the mint in your nose as you bring the cocktail to your mouth. By the way, drinking out of this glass is just a treat. Like it's, <laughs> I know it's so funny to say like, look at, look at how excited I am about this glass I'm drinking out of, but this is history. This is Trader Vic's history here. It's really passion fruit and honey I'm getting. What else is in there? Lime juice and great white grapefruit juice. That's, that's a pretty typical base for uh, tiki cocktails usually lime juice and something else. So I don't notice them really jumping out of this cocktail. It's more the other flavors, like the syrups. God, that's a good drink. I love this cocktail. I love the Voodoo Grog. I think the egg whites are really kind of holding everything together. And when I look down in it and I'm drinking it, it's so foamy. It's a, this is a fancy, fancy cocktail. And I mean, the presentation is insane. I want to say the uh, the rum that I used the other night was uh, it was like the uh, Nissan or how do you say that? I hold on. I used this stuff, the stuff that Ed Hamilton gave me. It's like a Agricole Blanc Nissan. I didn't remember. It's fifty percent alcohol, literally fifty percent alcohol. So you can't just substitute this for like the rum JM. I thought that it was like Agricole Blanc. I thought that it was uh, Martinique, Agricole. It just goes to show you how important it is to use the proper rums per cocktail. You know, you can make a Mai Tai with Bacardi. With, and I don't mean Bacardi 8. I mean some of the lesser Bacardis, but you're gonna taste it. It's gonna, it's gonna end up influencing the taste of the cocktail. So where that rum has like a very aggressive scent because it's 50% alcohol. It's, it's like an aggressive alcohol. <laughs> um, ooh, cork. This still smells like alcohol, but it has more of a floral kind of scent to it. I can see now why this rum is imperative to this cocktail because this floral kind of tasting rum works really well with things like passion fruit syrup and the fruit juices that we had. When I made this cocktail the first time, I was like, I God, I know that that's not right. I know that I did it wrong. And I was like up at night, tossing and turning. I was like, I, we can't put this out to America and the other countries who watch the show. Sorry, I always say America, but I do realize that this is an international show. We're internationally syndicated on the YouTube. But it really did bother me because I don't wanna put something out there, especially when we try to be so specific about ingredients glassware, like legitimately making this cocktail, the Voodoo Grog. You can make the Voodoo Grog in, in one of these. You can make the Voodoo Grog in this thing or in a Mai Tai glass. You, you could certainly make it in a Mai Tai glass, it'd be fine. But part of Tiki is selling this exotic uh, journey you're taking through cocktails and decor and music. And so when I do have the opportunity to make a cocktail in the glass that it was served in. We're, we're time traveling here, folks. It's, it's a special thing. It is a special thing. Special. Get off me. Just got a whole mouthful of foam on that one. <laughs> I'm trying not to remember that there's actually egg white in this, but dude, people use egg white all the time in cocktails, so don't get it up in your head about it. We should try some of the garnish, some of the pineapple. It does have some nutmeg on it, so uh, pardon me. Mmm. 
Nutmeg and pineapple. I like that. And actually, this is probably a delicious treat down here with like some of the cocktail on it. If somebody brought that to your table, just like this, not even with a drink, you would go, I want 75 more of those, please. That's so good. Folks, we have a bunch more guests coming up on the show. Uh, Viva Las Vegas is coming up, and if you're not familiar with what Viva Las Vegas is, Viva Las Vegas is like a four or five day rockabilly weekender, really with a focus on rockabilly music, but also there's burlesque shows and car show and all kinds of stuff, uh, pinup contests and slideshows from Charles Phoenix. But uh, I'm gonna have some of the DJs that will be at Viva Las Vegas, and they're gonna be here as guests on the show. So we can look forward to that. Also, I have a buddy who was in The Mandalorian. He's gonna join us for a really special cocktail. It's a, we're just going whoop, right, taking a right turn right off of the uh, the road with the one that we're gonna do with him. So that should be interesting. Folks, if you enjoyed this show, if you enjoy the whole show, like the thing that we've created together, please be sure to smash the like button. Smash that thing. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. It really does, it really does help me out. Join the Patreon if you haven't already. The $10 tier gets a custom little enamel pin that says Spikes Breezeway Cocktail Hour. It's a rad little pin. The only people to get that pin are $10 tier on the Patreon or people who have come on the show and participated in the show. So you can basically be like a show member. What? No, don't say that. But the Patreon does sincerely help the show because I don't make any money from this thing at all. And there's probably 20 hours a week or something that I put into this thing. And it's slowly killing me, but I do enjoy it. I enjoy all of you leaving comments on each video. And then even like the comments where I'm like, oh, this guy, like grinding me about not shaking something or like squeezing something wrong. Like I, yes, I do appreciate it because I'm not a bartender. I'm not, I'm like a dude that has a bar in his house and uh, I pay close attention to the ingredients and the recipes, and that's all there is to it. You know, pay attention, you'll be a great bartender. All right, aloha. As a vintage tiki collector, every once in a while you stumble upon something that either you find it at a thrift store or a mother all these cars. Hey, Jingles, come here. Let me take off your necklace. And the first time ever on the show, <laughs> Honey, mother Now I learned that there are cocktails that you would dry shake with an egg yolk, with an egg white. Did I tell you guys that I accidentally started like, in a, like a YouTube feud with Steve the bartender? What the hell, man? I was just joking around when Leandro was on the show from the Educated Barfly, and I was like, you know who I don't like? I don't like Steve the bartender. I said he's too good looking for his own good. So it's like the ultimate uh, backhanded compliment, I guess? It was like, like screw this guy, but also he's very handsome. I don't know, Steve found out. And then all of a sudden I see in my notifications on my phone, it pops up. It's like, Steve the bartender. And he goes, shots fired. Shots, I started an international incident with Australian. So like immediately I was like, oh no, Steve the bartender. No, I, I was just kidding, dude. I like, I'm sure you're a great guy. I was joking around because one of my friends who watches the show, she's like, oh, I love Steve the bartender. He's so good looking and he's so, he smiles when he shakes cocktails and stuff. And I was like, this guy, all sexy with his cocktail show, and good looks. <laughs> so I made a joke out of it. And then all of a sudden Steve the bartender found out and I was like, uh oh, thank God they're not flying people from Australia into the country right now. They'd be hunted down like a, like a kangaroo. See, that'll probably start another fight. No, but I, we're good. It seems like he's a really nice guy and I, I sincerely have like no hard feelings about the guy at all. So let me, uh, let me squash my first YouTube feud. There's no feud. Mm. Now the guy that was commenting about me sucking at my mint game, we could feud with that guy. Cause dude, more mint is the best mint. And who's complaining about that? More mint? I've been to bars where they're like, you get a cocktail, and they're like, here you go, sir. And you're like, that's the saddest thing I've ever seen. It's like the little piece of parsley they used to put on, like, on the side of your, your meal at Coco's or something. Like, what am I gonna do with that? That's why I think you have to garnish with a lot of mint. I think it serves the presentation better. I think the customer 
or whoever's over at your house goes, whoa, dude, that's like a, that's a fancy looking situation there. It's good business. So consider that. Pardon me, I'm, I'm drinking a zombie. The zombie blend is back in stock at high time in Costa Mesa, so pardon me. And I'm drinking it out of one of Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour zombie glasses. This is the only color that we have left. And, I, and when I say we have left, I mean like 10 sets left or something. So if you're interested in this, act now. Because I'm not gonna make these again. So they're super limited edition. Oh yeah, I do have an announcement about my band, the Hula Girls. Uh, keep October 2nd open, if you would. 